Hi, this is Russell Steiner from teachertrainingvideos.com. I am going to do a video today where I answer 10 of the most common questions that I've been asked about Zoom. I'm going to show you the questions in a minute to help you to decide whether or not this video is useful to you. Uh, I've been in, inundated with questions and I really hope that going through these questions and making this video is going to help a lot of you. As always, if you like what you see, please like the video, please share it with other teachers. I think that's really important at the moment. Any questions, put them in the chat in the uh, in the comments section. I'll do my best to answer them. I'm really struggling at the moment to keep up with them all. I'm dedicating about two hours a day to answering questions. And of course, if you like what you see, come and uh, follow me on teachertrainingvideos.com. You can sign up to the newsletter and you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Right, let's quickly go through the questions. So this is quickly the list of things that I'm going to cover. To be honest with you, it's going to deal with more than 10 questions, but it should cover most of the things that are coming up. So how do you record a Zoom session? How do you actually save that? Where can you find the file? How do you screen share everything? What do you do if you forgot to set something up and you're in the middle of a Zoom and you suddenly want to screen share it, but it's not open? How do you save the chat? Where is the chat saved afterwards? Where can you find it? Can you automatically save the chat? How do you find the missing chat window? This happens because when you go to full screen, and I'll show you that. How to find the breakout room? That's a settings. You need to put that in settings first before you actually open up the Zoom. How to allow students to annotate? We can do that. Again, it's a setting. How to give students an interactive whiteboard? So when students come into the breakout rooms and they're working in breakout rooms, sometimes they don't have an interactive whiteboard. Someone pointed me the, <laughs> this out to me the other day and I realized what the problem is, is, so I've sorted that out. How to control the students using screen share. You don't want all the students using screen share at the same time. There's a way of stopping that. How to sort out the audio when videos are playing. I keep pointing this out all the time. There's a certain button you must click on, otherwise the audio will not play when you play a video or play a YouTube video. And how to control a session. Just a few things about the way to work with audio. I hope that deals with a lot of the questions that are coming in. Let's get started. So the first thing is go onto your account in the normal place that when you just log on and come to on the left here, click on settings. Now occasionally you'll see this basic settings and advanced. It's still, it's just one big list. If you don't see that, don't worry about it, okay? Sometimes that doesn't appear. If you've got the screen on a smaller size, those two tabs won't appear. But all you need to do is click on settings and scroll down. And you wanna come down, actually it's a quite a long way. This is one of the things I don't like about Zoom. For me personally, it's got way too many settings. And the setting that you need is this one here. Don't worry so much about that, that's not important this one here. That means that when you open up your breakout room, the breakout room will appear at the bottom and you will be able to set your breakout rooms up. So while I'm on the settings, another really important setting is to allow your students to annotate. I keep saying a note and someone's told me often told me I've got to say annotate. So here, if you scroll up from the advanced, because this setting is in the basic settings. And you'll notice here, annotation. Allow participants to use annotation tools to add information to shared screens. That means any shared screen they can annotate on, even a video. So the answer to that is yes, and that means now your students can annotate on an interactive whiteboard software, over your PowerPoint presentations, over a video, over a document, over a PDF file. And the reason they can do that is that the way that annotate works is it's basically another layer on the video and they're drawing on it and then you can click and clean it off and then it disappears. So that is another really important setting. People are getting really confused uh, about how the screen share works and what they can share on this screen. And basically, you just need to understand that anything that you've got open on your screen, you can share with your students. But the important thing is to prepare that beforehand. Now, if I click on the share screen button, you can see here it's showing me, apart from an interactive whiteboard and this iPhone connection, that basically all the different windows that I've currently got open on my, on my screen. So, 
I should do that before the lesson starts. That's the best way to go, even if you have a PDF file and a Word document and a PowerPoint slide. Everything, just have it all open. It'll all be listed there. And if you can't see it in the screens here, you'll see a little one that says more windows and then more, more will open if you've got lots and lots of tabs open. You can actually do this in the middle of a, of a lesson, but that would mean that you would minimize the screen, so bring it down to absolute minimum, and then get everything prepared that you wanted to open. So let's just take an example. Let's imagine that I wanted suddenly to have a document open on the screen. So let's say I'm gonna to go to my documents, and then I'm gonna to go to uh, writing, and let's just as a quick example, and then I'm gonna open up uh, some kind of activity or document onto the screen and just going to open that up and I've got now got a PowerPoint slide that I also or sorry a Word document that I want, also want to share. So I've got everything ready I come back maximize the zoom window click on screen share and now everything is there okay so there's my Word file and I'll click on that and I can open that onto the screen and if you've got the students set to a note then they will be able to also a note on the screen don't forget when you want to clear it click on clear to clear it off stop sharing come back again you want to share something else this time the PowerPoint slide so you click on the PowerPoint again click on share opens onto the screen you can do everything that you can normally do so now I can start to actually go through the PowerPoint pr presentation by clicking on it here and just going through the pages no problem at all click on escape I come out of it I want to stop sharing I come back Everything is open in, in advance. Click on screen share. I might jump to the video that I've got open. Click on the video, and now I can play the video. And again, when I finish, I'll stop sharing. Now, one thing about video, if I just come back and make it really clear, make sure that you click on this button because that shares the audio sound of your computer on the computers that you're working with. So the thing about screen share is to make sure that everything is open beforehand. It just makes it like really easy because then all of the windows that are opened will show up on the screen. Okay, um, but when you're in a window, so when you click here, for example, and you come into a window, you can still do all the normal things that you can do. So as I said before, you can click here and double click and open up the presentation and go for it. Doesn't make any difference. Uh, click on the etc. But then when you stop sharing, you come back out of the presentation. So have everything prepared when you're working with screen share. Another common problem is, is that the uh, students, yes, they can do screen share, but they are not able to share an interactive whiteboard. And again, that is a setting. It's kind of annoying sometimes that Zoom has got so many of these settings. But if we click on settings and come down again, you will notice that, um, if I could just come down here and quickly show you where it is, it's in the basic part, if I remember rightly. And I think you'll find if we can get there it is okay sorry allow participants to share whiteboard during a meeting okay and that is yes okay and that should allow them that when they screen share um, they've also so if they're in breakout rooms they will also have an interactive whiteboard available to them so when if we quickly jump back to um, zoom and the point I'm trying to make is here. In other words, you've got this facility available to you and the students should now have that when they go into the breakout rooms as well. Okay, what I want to do now is go through how we can record. When we set up a Zoom session, so let's start by doing that. Just quickly click on to Zoom. I click over here on my account, kind of log into my account and then what I'm going to do is uh, click on meetings I'm going to schedule a meeting and notice that when I schedule a meeting I can click on this button here and record the meeting on local computer so I'm going to click on save and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start that meeting as soon as I start the meeting the recording will be uh, it will be recording straight away because it's automatically going to start there I am on the screen I'm not going to leave myself on the screen like that so I'm going to turn the audio the uh, video off you can see it's recording up there I can press on pause or, pause or stop it at any time but what I want to point out if I now for example open up my screen and I open up the interactive whiteboard for example and clicked on share and then I drew on anything 
then that will come out in the recording, absolutely no problem at all. And if I clicked on stop, and again, I came up to the share window and perhaps I shared something else. Uh, I haven't got many windows open at the moment, but let's basically say that I opened up this screen just for a quick second. That would suddenly be onto the screen um, and that will come out in the recording. Just to demonstrate this, it could be a PowerPoint slide that I'm showing. Again, I'm going to stop sharing and come back again. And now I'm actually going to not going to turn off the recording. I'm just going to end the session. Now, automatically, when you end the session, because you set it to record, it's going to quickly convert those files. And now I need to tell them, well, where do I want to save them? So I've already created on my desktop, I've already created a place where I'm going to keep those recordings. I think I've got it here, let me just get it right. They are Zoom recordings. Click on there and click on OK. And those three files, and there are three files that it creates. The only one we're interested really is this one here, which is an MP4 file, okay? And that is the actual Zoom recording. So let's have a quick look at that now. So that's now onto the screen, and it's in a fairly standard, sorry, clicked on the wrong button there, Zoom recordings, fairly standard uh, format. So if I was to click on that, So then, and if we come over to the interactive whiteboard part now, so we just scroll, there it is, so you can see that where I'm drawing on the interactive whiteboard, that all comes out. And if we come a bit further down, whatever I share on the screen will come out, okay? Notice, all right, whether that was a PowerPoint, whether that was me showing a picture, playing a video, etc. Everything will come out in the recording. Now, you need to understand, of course, that once you've got those recordings, that doesn't mean to say, uh, you know, well, you could share that with your students if that's the way you want to do it, but there might be a chance that you would want to edit this. So the typical thing would be to open up some type of editing tool that you could use to edit that video. Now, the problem is to edit a Zoom movie, you're going to have to learn to use some uh, software and that. I always use something called Camtasia, so I'm not really familiar with the free tools that are around. You're going to have to look on YouTube or look in Google and see what suggestions are made. But just to give you an idea how easy it would be to do that in theory, you would literally just click on a file that you wanted to open, for example, that recording that we just made, bring it into a video editing tool like uh, Camtasia, the one that I'm going to use now, and then you can literally just play along the video and you can choose, for example, a point where you might want to chop something off and you just chop it off and then that part of the video is deleted. So, you know, what is good about Zoom is that the output of a Zoom recording is uh, an MP4 file, which is generally pretty easy to edit and then share, but you would have that problem. Okay, so what we're going to try and deal with now is the chat window. We're going to show you some things about chat. First of all, if you're in full screen, uh, you'll notice that you can't see the chat. And if you click on the chat, it will float. And the participants window, the same thing. If you click on the participants window, it will also float. When you're in full screen, the chat window and the participants window kind of disappear. And if you click on to open them, they don't open up on the side. However, when you come out of full screen, so exit full screen, suddenly they come on the side. Now, if you go to maximize, that's different from full screen. Maximize is when you just go to the biggest size, but you're not full screen. They also stay there, but immediately you click enter full screen, they disappear, okay? That's really important. That's happened to me. I was wondering where are my chat windows? Secondly, if you haven't automatically set it that you wanna save your chat, when you do your chat, so come down here and let's just quickly add in a little bit of chat to make it absolutely clear. If you click on this button here, you will notice that it says save chat. And if you save chat and then click on the folder, you will see that your chat is being saved. Each meeting you have is given a room number and all of your meetings will be there. Now, you just save your chat and it's there. Now, if you wanna find it afterwards, just go to your documents, zoom, and then you'll see the date, and obviously it will be the latest one. I'll show you in a minute. So that's one way to do your chat window. In other words, you're doing your chat, but you've got to remember in that case to click on save chat at the end, and of course the chat will be in the folder, and it's just as a text document. Now, there is a setting that means that always your chats will be saved. 
So you might be asking where all your chats are. Go to your documents. Uh, a, a folder is automatically created when you sign up to Zoom. Click on Zoom and you should see all your chats there. So I've been doing a lot of practice today. And this is obviously the last one I can see from the time and the date. That's the one that we just created together. And that's the chat and it opens up and wasn't a very exciting chat, but it's there on the screen. So that's the way to uh, save your chats and then obviously to access them and then share them with your students. But there is one setting. If you wanna always make sure that you change, uh, you save your chats, there is one thing you can do. As usual, it's gonna be in this famous settings button. Come down here, scroll down again, and if I remember rightly, it is in the basic part, not in the advanced, and I think I can see it here. Uh, auto saving chats, put that on. And that means that even if you forget to click on that chat button, all your chats will be saved in your Zoom file. Allowing your students to screen share is really important, especially if they go into breakout rooms. If they can't share anything, all they can then do is be on their webcams and speak. Obviously, if you've given them something to speak about, okay, but much more interesting if they can have an interactive whiteboard on the screen, or they can, for example, um, have, uh, you know, a PowerPoint slide open or a document open or a picture open. So you really need to give them the chance to be able to share their screens the, the same way that you can. But what is important is to try to control that a little bit. So come to advanced sharing. One participant can share at a time, great idea. Who can share? All participants, great idea. Who can start? Or who can start sharing when someone else is sharing? So who can intervene when someone else is sharing something on the screen? Only the host. That would be a really good idea. This way, when the students go into the breakout rooms, they should be able to share. But remember also to make sure that you've allowed students to have interactive whiteboards when they go into the breakout rooms. And I showed you that earlier in the video. One thing to keep in mind is that anything that you can open up on the screen of your, docu on your, of your computer, you can therefore share with your students. So for example, if you have a document scanner and you're scanning something and it comes out on the screen of your computer, then you can just share that. And the same with video. I did kind of touch on this earlier, but obviously if I click on a video and simply just choose a video to play, okay, and I'll just stop it there. As soon as I come over to screen share, click on screen share, make sure I choose this computer sound and then click on that video. Suddenly now I'm screen sharing that video. So anything that's on the, share of the screen of your computer, you can share. Okay, last issue I wanna try and deal with here, it's a very tricky one, how you control the audio. I've been speaking to lots of teachers, they're suggesting that the students need the audio on at the beginning, they need to understand that it's a classroom, that they're in there, that they can make a noise, that they can speak, that they can see their colleagues. So most people are suggesting that you have the webcam and the audio on at the beginning. The problem is, especially the webcam will slow down Zoom, particularly if you haven't got a very fast internet connection, webcam always takes up a certain amount of kind of data, it uses up quite a lot of data. The obvious button to click on is mute all. If we just turn that off a minute, or in fact I've got it on already, but just to click on it and just make a point. This button here allow participants to unmute themselves. Obviously that's a good idea if you're working perhaps with adults, so they can unmute themselves and speak and then uh, you can, and then they can mute themselves again. If you're working with young learners, you might want to have the control, so don't put that on, just click on yes. And then if you want to unmute anyone, you just come up to here, click on unmute, and then that person is unmuted. And then you can mute them again. So if you want someone to speak, you can say, right Tom, what do you want to say? Unmute, bang, they speak, mute again, and then move on. Now, I know this is very controlled. This is the reason we need to get people into breakout rooms and do activities where we're passing over control to the students, but often in a presentation with a question answering session, that's something you might wanna do. 
Okay, I really hope that was useful. I try to cover loads of the questions that keep coming in to me. Don't forget, if you come to teachertrainingvideos.com, at the top here, lots of different sections, but there's one on Zoom that could be really useful, one on Edmodel that could be really useful, and one on Snagit that could be really useful. If you wanna follow my work, sign up to the newsletter, that way you get updated with all the latest videos and all the latest webinars and the blog posts I write. Of course, you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. I think that's doing quite well now, maybe about six 16,000 subscribers and if you do need to contact me you can contact me uh, on teachertrainingvideos.com obviously I do a lot of online training if you need help with Zoom or you need help with Camtasia or with Edmodel then please contact me and thank you very much